Here's five footer components you can start using in your project right now with more components coming soon. To use these components, let's copy the Webflow version and we'll go ahead and paste it into our project and we can style it however we'd like. So on the footer, I'll give it a height screen, which just applies a min height, 100 SVH. And let's also give it a vertical flex that stretches on X and aligns to top on Y so we can affect children inside. So we'll grab the top part of our footer and we'll give it a flex grow so it fills all the available space. And inside the footer, let's add a global visual and let's just choose an image here and we can put this visual up top. Now we can also rename any of these classes. So we'll go ahead and rename this to use our large style and it'll affect every single one of the linked text. Now this one linked text is breaking onto two lines and usually by changing font style, we would have to go readjust where the grid wraps on each breakpoint to account for that. But since we're using Lumos, we can just head over to our auto fit grid and we can configure this to be maybe a min of 11 width rim for the columns instead of nine. And that'll just change where the columns wrap and it's automatically responsive. So right before these links run into each other, it just automatically wraps onto a new line. Now notice how this is also an auto fit grid. So these elements are stacking under each other here, but whenever there's more space, they'll actually just stack side by side. So no space is wasted. And when there's less space, it goes to stacking under. This is the start of what will likely become a full blown component library. And for these components, I really put a strong focus on accessibility. If we look at sites like Apple, they have the footer tags wrap their footer. Inside that, they have a hidden H2 for screen reader users who choose to navigate a site using headings. This helps us maintain the correct heading structure. Now, if we turn its opacity down or set it to display none, screen readers won't read it. So it needs a specific screen reader only class. And inside that, they have a nav tag to wrap all of the footer's navigation links. And inside of that, they have the H3 for the subheadings and unordered list for the links. And this is so users can skip between lists without having to tab through each link individually. So if we take a look at our structure, it follows the same thing. We have our footer tag. We have an H2 in that with a screen reader only class. We could change this to say company name footer if we'd like. And we also have our nav tag to wrap all of the navigation links. And inside of that, we have our H3, and then we have our unordered list. And anything that should be a list is. So everything from this to even the social links. If we take a look at these social links, their link blocks already have the correct area labels. So this one says Facebook, and this SVG inside has area hidden since it's decorative and we don't want it, the screen reader to announce image. We just want it to announce the name of the social link. And for the logo, we have uh, the link block wrapped in a real label of go to home page. So by using these components, all their real labels and accessibility is just preset for you. And I tested this with screen readers just to make sure it reads and navigates well with each of these components. These Lumos components also ensure the text is legible when the user increases their font size. For the majority of Webflow sites out there, it looks like this whenever the user increases their font size, text just overflows into each other. But with the Lumos components, the grid just reflows whenever that increased font size happens. And we can ensure with all of our components, the text is always legible. And whether it be a flex box or a grid layout, things just wrap when there's not enough space. The third and final requirement I had for these components is that they're not made up of a lot of custom CSS. So if we add any of these components into a non-Lumos project, it looks pretty much completely unstyled. And that's a great thing. That means it's not bringing a lot of new CSS into our project when we add a component. So this is the only CSS that was generated for this entire footer component. We can also copy the Figma version of any component and paste it into Figma. We always wanna click copy variables into this file. Since this is not a Lumos Figma file, it's just gonna bring over the variables that were used in this project so we won't have every column with option or every option here. It's better to start with an actual Lumos Figma file and we still wanna click copy variables into this file. It's not gonna create duplicate variables. It will replace the variables that were in this section with the ones that are already in our Figma file. So our Figma variables will not get overridden. And if we copy another one and let's go ahead and paste this in, if we weren't to press this button, then we'd have a bunch of elements not connected to the variables already in our project, which is not what we want. 
So once we have all of these synced up now, we can go to any style, whether it be typography, maybe it's something like border width, and notice how when I update this, it's updating the border width across every component, across every element. So we can just start loosely lining up our page with these components, and when we're ready to dive into art treatment, we can globally update any of the typography, the global spacing values, all those are linked to variables.